So hello and welcome to my astrology channel. It has been a long time since I made another video and I thought that I would start with a new playlist or a new series of videos that focus on basically finding the partner or spouse archetype in a person's natal chart. Um, I will also at some point continue with the Venus through signs series. I know it's been a while. Uh, the next one to be put out will be Venus in Libra. I hope to get it done within the next couple of weeks, but I can't promise anything because my life is quite hectic uh, and busy, busy, busy right now. So yeah, let me just get on with it. Um, so. How to see the spouse archetype, okay, or the partner archetype? First of all, you have to understand um, that there is, you know, everybody basically looks for a certain type of partner that is usually pretty well described by the natal chart uh, through various aspects and various elements. And there also can be sometimes a difference between the kind of partner that you are attracted to and the kind of partner that you end up with a lot of the times. Um, so I've broken it down into basically four key elements that you have to look at when it comes to determining the partner, the type of the partner that you're going to have. The first, and I think the most important, is the Darakaraka, uh, that is D-A-R-A-K-A. R A K A. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, this is from Vedic astrology. Uh, it's a concept that is said to show the spouse in one's natal chart. You may have heard of it, maybe not. There's definitely some information about it online if you want to look for it, but this will be my take on it. Um, and it's basically the planet with the lowest degree in your birth chart. Um, and when I'm talking about the planet with the lowest degree, I'm talking about looking at your chart from the sidereal point of view, the sidereal zodiac. And if you don't know how to see that, please check the description. I have linked uh, the link from astro.com of exactly how you can calculate your chart in the sidereal zodiac. And you can see the planet with the lowest degree. And also, when you look at the planet with the lowest degree, bear in mind that in sidereal Vedic interpretations, you only look at the first seven planets. So you don't look at uh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, or the north node or south node of the moon. So you can only have like Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, or Saturn. Seven planets as Darakaraka. And, of course, you have to look at the sign placement, you have to look at the aspects that it makes, but this is overall the most important archetype, in my view. And equally important, uh, there are, you know, the close seconds. Uh, the second aspect that you have to look at is the seventh house ruler, because the seventh house is the house of the partner or the spouse, and the ruler of the seventh house will show not just the archetype of the partner that you will be attracted to, but also the kind of partner, and not just attracted to, but also a person who balances you out and is your opposite. Uh, because, you know, the first, house, the first house is you, the ascendant, and then the seventh house is your partner. So this is the person who you're attracted to because they balance you out, they complete you. So you have to look at the seventh house lord and the seventh house lord's placement uh, in uh, by sign, by house, by aspect, and also by nakshatra, which is another thing, or lunar mansion, but I won't get into that right now. <laughs> Maybe at some point I will, because it's more in detail. Um, and not really necessary at this point, because you can get a pretty good interpretation without going that far into detail. So, the third thing you have to look at, uh, planets in the seventh house, which are pretty much just as important almost as the lord of the seventh house. 
uh, because, you know, a person who has sun in the seventh house will, uh, will want a, a Leonian kind of partner, whereas somebody who has moon in the seventh house will want a moon, lunar, cancer type of partner. So it is pretty important as well to look at the planets in the seventh house and planets that aspect the seventh house. Um, also, I haven't made a video about this, but there is information online if you look for it. In Vedic astrology, uh, certain planets cast so-called special aspects. So, for instance, uh, Mars aspects the fourth house from itself. So, I think if you have, like, Mars in the third house, for instance, uh, that means that Mars aspects the seventh house. Uh, let me think. Wait. Third, fourth, fifth. No, wait, no. If you have Mars in the 4th house, so it's 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, right? If you have Mars in the 4th house, it will also aspect the 7th house. So that's somewhat similar to having Mars in the 7th house, but not exact, not as powerful, not as powerful of a Martian energy in there as if it were Mars actually placed in the 7th house, but still it will give a Mars kind of flavor to the partner and the relationship atmosphere. Um, yeah, so you might want to look out for that one. Um, another, so, wait, so far, right, I have talked about planets, right? So the fourth and equally important aspect that you have to look for when it comes to judging the spouse archetype um, is Jupiter or Jupiter and Mars for women, Venus for mo for men. Um, why I have spoken about this also in my Venus Through Signs series a lot of the times and also other videos probably. Uh, when you look at a man's chart, the Venus shows the wife archetype or the wife ideal that he has. And when you look at a woman's chart, Jupiter shows the husband that she will want, and Mars shows the type of man that she finds most attractive. Like, if it were, you can see Jupiter as the husband and Mars as the boyfriend. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that women are tend to be unfaithful or anything <laughs> like, but it does show that a, a woman could be, for instance, attracted to a Mars type of man, uh, but really will want to have a Jupiter kind of man uh, as a husband. You know, depending on the individual chart, this could show maybe some inner conflict. The The ideal scenario for a woman would be to have Jupiter and Mars in conjunction. And that way, basically, you have the typical scenario where a woman starts a relationship, you know, goes through the stages of being friends, boyfriend with a guy, and then after a few years, they eventually get married. Uh, you, you see this a lot with women who have... Mars conjunct Jupiter, because the boyfriend and the husband kind of overlap, become one, as it were. Uh, for instance, Angelina Jolie has this, and you can see it in her chart and in her life experience, because she has pretty much married uh, her serious boyfriend, so there it is. So... Also, I have prepared a few prepared uh, a few examples. Um, nothing too deep, starting at light, because I will get into hopefully more detail within future videos. Um, so, just to give you an example of how you can read this for a person, for instance, Leonardo DiCaprio, right, um, has Mercury Dara Karaka. So. I'm just, quickly, I'm going to go through all the Dara Karaka uh, placements and what they typically mean. Um, so, for instance, a person who has Sun Dara Karaka, they will want a partner who embodies Leo qualities. So, they will want a, a partner who is regal and proud and loyal and uh, kind of a show-off, super confident, ambitious, uh, knows what they want out of life. Um, a bit of a drama queen or king, <laughs> um, somebody who's creative, somebody who is, you know, very much, very much the Leo archetype. You know, they will want somebody who is the king or the queen of their, I don't know, their jungle, whatever their jungle may be. 
Um, so somebody who has moon is dark karka, they will want um, somebody who is, you know, very nurturing and very cancer-like, so very much the cancer archetype. They will want somebody who they can have a strong emotional connection with. They want somebody who's nurturing and affectionate and, um, you know, maternal, maybe somewhat of a homebody, um, domestic, whatever, like all those, all the good stuff. Comfort loving, you know, not so much adventurous, for instance. Um, somebody who has Mercury as dark arca will want somebody who's analytical, logical, intelligent, and typically goes for the young, younger partner types. Um, they will go for people who are talkative and intellectual, nerdy, um, but also good at speaking skills, writing skills, communication in general. Um, somebody who has Venus as Dara Karaka, they will want somebody who is obviously very good looking. Uh, when it comes to men who have Venus Darakaraka, you can bet that they will fall fall for the pretty women, you know, the good looking women, the babes. <laughs> and also typically for a man because uh, Venus, I mean, because for a woman, beauty is connected to youth. Men who have uh, Venus as Darakaraka, they will definitely tend to go for young women. Uh, young looking women and definitely very good looking classically good looking you know sensual curvy everything that you know Venus would embody um, artistic of course somebody who has a pleasant voice somebody who is sensual and last but not least somebody who's quite pragmatic and maybe good at managing money um, Mars is a dark karka. Of course, if you have a woman having Mars as a dark karka, they definitely want a manly man, okay? They will want a man who is very ambitious, very driven, pioneering, maybe a bit rough at the ed around the edges. Um, you know, definitely not somebody who is sensitive and emotional. They will want somebody who's passionate and driven and... Um, maybe a little bit unstable. These are definitely the typical women that will tend to go for the bad boys. So depending on what aspects that Mars makes, uh, maybe there will be slight variations to this interpretation. Like if you find a woman who has Mars, let's say, as a dark karka but conjunct moon, then maybe this uh, particular man that this woman would like uh, is also emotional and emotionally intense, uh, but also quite sensitive because of the moon influence. So you always have to look at aspects. Um, and, and of course, sign placements. Um, then if you have Jupiter as Dara Karaka, you will want somebody who has a higher education, somebody who has... Uh, a good head on their shoulders, who is into spiritual things, higher philosophy, higher learning, um, somebody who's cultured, uh, maybe somebody who works in a legal field, things to do with justice and morality, or even organized religion, depending on what other aspects are there. Um, I would say definitely Jupiter in Pisces, as Dara Karaka would show, maybe somebody who's religious, particularly somebody of the Christian religion, um, that would fit nicely. I'm not trying to say that everybody who has Jupiter in Pisces will be a Christian. Um, okay. <laughs> Digressing. Okay, Saturn as a Dara Karaka would be, you know, somebody who finds, who is attracted to the older man, older woman, uh, pattern. So they will be attracted to somebody who may be, even if they're not necessarily physically older, somebody who is very stable, very dependable. Um, they will not be so much attracted to somebody who maybe is overly romantic or flashy or um, flamboyant or demonstrative in their emotions, but they will be attracted to somebody who is down-to-earth, pragmatic, and can be 
in some ways, you know, helpful materially and pragmatically, because that's what Saturn stands for, um, they will also be attracted to partners that are mature and serious, you know. So they will definitely not be drawn to, I don't know, one-night stands or, you know, just having super playful partners. So, yeah. So that was just really quickly going through the Darakarka interpretations. And now for some examples. Leo DiCaprio. Um, Leo DiCaprio has... Mercury as a dark arca, and this is so telling in his case because not only does he have Mercury as dark arca, but Mercury is conjunct Sun, Moon, and Venus. Okay, and this pretty much shows that he is attracted to young, attractive women. Okay, uh, Mercury, right? Like I said in the general description, people who have Mercury as a dark arca. I would definitely say they tend to be attracted to younger partners. Um, and also, in his case, having Mercury conjunct Venus, uh, Sun, and Moon, and Mars, sorry, um, this would definitely show, you know, the young, fit, energetic um, female archetype, okay? So, there it is, okay? Of course, this in itself doesn't actually show flightiness or anything like that. It wouldn't necessarily explain... Um, you know, jumping around from one relationship to another. Maybe there are some aspects in his chart. I haven't checked his entire chart, but this particular aspect all by itself would not necessarily show that he doesn't want to settle down or like he who likes to jump around from one relationship to another, but it definitely shows an attraction to younger partners, okay? Um, Catherine Zita Joan has Moon as her Dara Karaka. In Pisces, opposite Sun, Mercury, Jupiter. And this is pretty interesting. Moon in Pisces as Dara Karaka definitely shows that she wants somebody who is an emotional support. Somebody that she has a strong emotional connection with and who will be nurturing, understanding, kind, um, you know amicable, you know, somebody who is malleable and, and can, uh, you know, fit the needs of the partner. And this is definitely kind of shown in her relationship with Michael Douglas. It's kind of weird to me. Well, not weird, but I would have maybe thought maybe there was some aspect that shows, um, you know, that he would, she would be attracted to older men. But you don't really see that. What you do see, however, is ruler of... So, her seventh house is in Taurus. And so the ruler of her seventh house is Venus, which is in Leo and opposite Rahu. So the ruler of her seventh house is opposite Rahu, which means conjunct Ketu. Which, to me, maybe kind of explains why she went for an older man. Because... Um, Venus conjunct K2, as, especially in her case because it rules the 7th house, would definitely show that she is attracted to somebody that she can have a spiritual connection with, like a spiritual emotional connection with. So to me this is somebody who doesn't care so much about the outer shell. Uh, that's what I can say at least because Maybe she and Michael Douglas have some kind of a karmic relationship but whereby they have met in previous lives and now they have met once again to be together. I don't know. I haven't actually looked at their, you know, cross sinistry chart. Maybe there is something going on there uh, that, will sh that would show a karmic connection. But just this particular aspect can definitely show that she is attracted to partners that she will have a spiritual connection with. And also, last but not least, in her chart she has Jupiter in the 11th house. Um, now, Jupiter for a woman, uh, the house placement of Jupiter would show technically where you will meet your future husband. And, or how you will meet your future husband. And in the 11th house, it pretty much shows that you are likely to meet your spouse through mutual acquaintances or social events or you know, mutual friends introducing you, stuff like that. I actually saw this in several charts before uh, of people who met their partners through mutual friends uh, or at 
you know, some event where everybody got together and they were there and they were introduced by mutual friends or mutual acquaintances. And as far as I heard, Catherine Zita and Michael Douglas were introduced by a common acquaintance. So there you go. Um, so Michael Douglas, because we also check Catherine Zita, it would be fair to check his chart as well. Dark Arca, Venus in Libra, Conjunct Ascendant. Um, this is telling because for him, he meets his future wife in the home base, or like, in the homeland, if you were. <laughs> so, yeah, if he would have had, let's say, Venus in the ninth house, that could have shown that he would have met his wife in a travel abroad or something, traveling away from his homeland or his birthplace. But Venus in the first house pretty much shows he will meet his spouse in close to his home base or his home, which, well, figures, because that is pretty much what happened. Um, okay. And also, Venus is Dara Karaka for him, so he went for the young, beautiful wife unsurprisingly, you know, Venus in Libra as well, so very, very Venus, definitely somebody who likes beautiful women, so yeah, can't blame him, right, for going for the most gorgeous woman in Hollywood at that time. Um, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, oh yeah, okay, so I actually checked Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, which I found kind of funny, Sort of funny, maybe not so much. Um, so for Brad Pitt, he has his Dara Karaka as Sun, and it's conjunct Rahu. Uh, no, not conjunct, sorry, it's opposite Rahu. And I found this kind of kind of interesting because Rahu is said to create confusion in everything that it touches, but it's also something that suggests um, that the partner is going to be in some way foreign origin, a foreign origin, or very strange, uh, which <laughs> I don't have to tell you that this is pretty darn accurate, okay, his partner was very strange, now, I don't know about, uh, I mean, at least Angelina Jolie, I don't know about all his other former partners, some of them I'm sure were strange because I think he dated, um, I mean, foreign origin or or strange. Don't don't take it as offensive. But I know that he dated, I think, Sandy Newton at some point. So she was of a different race. Um, and he also dated, I think, uh, what was her name? God, what was her name? I forgot. You know, the chick who played, uh, who acted in Natural Born Killers. Uh, she was pretty strange, <laughs> I would say. So in any case, it shows. Uh, you know, Dara Karaka son, it definitely shows that he is attracted to, you know, dramatic women, actors. Um, you know, opposite Rahu, you know, also means on the one hand spiritual, and on the other hand it, sh it means somebody who is in some way very different to his culture and his sta status quo. He also has Venus conjunct Moon, Mercury, Mars, in Sagittarius, in the second house. And Venus is also the ruler of the seventh house. So, one thing that I can say for sure is that he will want his partner to be a mother. And also younger, because Venus is conjunct Moon, Mercury, Mars, and also being conjunct Mars, he will go for women who are very passionate and possibly aggressive um, in Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarius, which is the sign of higher knowledge and higher, you know, open-mindedness and tolerance and, uh, you know, goodwill for all. Um, I'm not at all surprised that he fell for Angelina Jolie because... <laughs> Um, you know, because pretty much his Venus situation describes Angelina Jolie to a T, almost. He's Venus and Dara Karaka. Uh, and in second house, this is kind of confusing. Well, I think technically Venus in the second house would mean that he met his wife during family gatherings 
or um, like I think somewhat, you know, in any case it definitely shows that he will meet his spouse somewhere close to his home base. Um, maybe not exactly in his hometown, but definitely not in a foreign uh, place or anything. But technically that's what Venus in the second house would mean, like meeting somebody through your family or somehow. And I don't think this is really accurate unless I'm missing some information about how they met, but they did meet on set. Now, whether there was somehow some family involved in that, who knows. I know that his father-in-law law was uh, somehow connected to a production company or something, but I don't know. I haven't actually researched into this. Um, in any case, his Venus and Dara Karaka situation would definitely explain why he was attracted to Angelina Jolie. And one thing that I will say also for Rahu that it does tend to confuse things. So, Rahu is kind of like smoke and mirrors, you know, and, and actually in his case it's not so much Rahu but it's actually Ketu which is like the blind side of the demon, you know. Remember when I described the Rahu Ketu dynamic in my video about how to interpret the Rahu and Ketu? I said, you know, according to the legend, Rahu is the head of the, the dragon and Ketu is the, the headless body. So Ketu shows an area in your life in your life where you are literally well, not literally, figuratively blind. Um because you just don't you don't have your head so you you do maybe rash decisions or you don't see the full picture or you go by instinct not so much reason um and it's also has to do with things like spiritual connection spiritual dynamic or something and so in his case having sun conjunct ketu um and sun being his darakaraka it could show that he is some in some way maybe blinded when he chooses his partners. He chooses partners based on instinct or some kind of undefinable spiritual connection that he feels that may cause him trouble because he's not seeing things clearly. Um, and also on a side note what it means for him is that Sun Kunjun Ketu is actually shows a deep uh, insecurity there, a deep lack of confidence actually. Um, of course, this would mainly apply to the first half of his life, and hopefully he did, he did get over that. Um, moving on to Angelina Jolie, because if we check Brad Pitt, we gotta check Angelina Jolie, sorry. Uh, seventh house, okay, so she has ascendant in Cancer, which means, um, she has Saturn as a seventh house ruler. And... Let me see. Venus as a Dara Karaka, aspected by Rahu. Okay, this is so funny. Um, Venus has aspect. So in her case, Venus is aspected by Rahu. It's not opposite Rahu, which means it's not conjunct Ketu. But it is aspected by Rahu, which technically means um, that in her case also the partner is in somehow either a foreign origin or strange or different from what she is used to, the status quo. And as far as I heard, like, again, she had some weird partners. I mean, she def she married, I think her first husband was an Englishman, so there's your foreign origin. But then she also had Billy Bob Thornton, who was a bit weird. <laughs> And they had a weird relationship because, again, Venus also shows the actual course of your relationships. And really, really funny, uh, actually telling, is the ruler of her seventh house, Saturn, uh, is in the twelfth house. And it's aspected by Mars, okay? Um, the twelfth house is actually the house of hidden affairs and bed pleasures. And unsurprisingly, actually, most of her relationships started out as affairs. Um, so that were hidden from the public, obviously, and the relationship with Brad Pitt was no exception. So there you go <laughs> for astrology being accurate. Um, Jupiter, she has Jupiter in the ninth house, conjunct Moon, conjunct Mars, and again, as aspected by Rahu. Um, 
So, so, no matter how you look at it, her husband is either weird uh, or of a foreign origin or strange, different from the status quo. Now, you have to bear in mind that for her, status quo meant growing up in L.A., so uh, she probably thought Brad Pitt was weird. So, <laughs> there is that explanation. But also, Jupiter aspected by Rahu... It's so funny because in her case, like, Jupiter aspected by Rahu and um, Venus, her dark karka, also aspected by Rahu, could definitely also show that in her case, she is blinded by passion when it comes to relationship and can tend to throw herself headfirst without, you know, getting all the necessary information. And that could lead to disputes in relationships and unhappy endings, especially since... In her case, having Capricorn in the 7th, it shows that she needs to get married late in order to have a stable relationship. And last but not least, okay, we have Hillary Clinton, who has Dara Karaka Jupiter in the 1st house, aspected by Mars. I think I've spoken of her before in a video, I don't remember which one. Um, Jupiter as Dara Karaka shows that her partner will be involved in law. And she met her partner, a.k.a. Bill Clinton, uh, when they were both law students. So, also, Jupiter as Dara Karaka in the first house, aspected by Mars, means that she will meet her partner in her home base, or like her, you know, definitely her homeland, if not her hometown, but close to her hometown, if you were, or her place of origin. Um, aspected by Mars, passionate law student would fit the description of her selected partner. <laughs> and ruler of the seventh is Mars and it's conjunct Saturn in the tenth house. Conjunct Saturn actually shows a long lasting relationship, which again pretty much fits her description. So there it is and this is all the examples that I had. Um, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, please comment if you liked it, and if you want to see more of this, and what else you would like to see more of. And also, don't forget, like, if you want a personal consultation, please email me at the email in the description. And thank you for your attention. Bye!